Hello, good morning. I'm Dr. Dre with A Better Way MD TV, and welcome to week 20, which is brought to you by the color pink. 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 I love the color pink. It makes me happy. And speaking of happy, let's talk about our emotional life because last week, week 19, I said that we were going to pivot to looking at how our emotional life is creating emotional eating. And I would argue that if you're struggling with weight or if you're struggling with your, your relationship with food, that you are indeed emotionally eating. So think about the last time that you ask yourself, why am I eating this? And I catch myself doing this sometimes and even saying, why am I eating this? I'm not hungry and it doesn't even taste good. And when I get that question, why am I eating something? I realize it's because of an emotional reason. And I ask myself three questions. The first is, what am I asking this food to solve? So am I asking the food to make me, to soothe me, to feel better, to relieve something? And if the answer is no, then I go to the second question, which is, what am I trying to make better with food? Am I trying to make a situation better? Am I trying to make a celebration better? What am I trying to make better with food? And then if that is nothing or no, then the third question is, what am I afraid of? What am I afraid of that I think food is going to make me feel better about? And if I answer those three questions, I can typically figure out why indeed I am emotionally eating. Now, last week, I also asked you to figure out what your top three to five negative emotions are. And my top three are frustration, overwhelm, and anxiousness. And... Um, I did do this exercise myself this week, and I realized that those are indeed my three top emotions. And while I call them negative emotions, and I think a lot of those feelings have negative connotations, it doesn't mean that they're bad. Feelings are just feelings. Emotions are just mo emotions. They're neither good nor bad. They are just there, but we have to learn how to deal with our inner emotional life and not use food to solve our problem. Now, Sometimes we do use food to feel better and that's okay. And if you're not struggling with your weight or you're not having a problem with your relationship with food, then it's no big deal. But for those that, of us that are, we do have to address this emotional component. And that's one of the reasons that diets don't work because diets are just looking at food as the cause. Food is not really the cause per se. It's what it's, it's why you're eating. Your big why is the reason is, is the big problem. And we have to get to the bottom of it. Now, when I ask my cl clients, like, what's the number one feeling that causes you to eat? They, by and large, say stress. They feel stressed all the time. And um, I think it's pretty common for us to say that we are stressed out. And I think it's a good idea to stop and look at the definition of what stress means. And there are multiple definitions of stress. And stress can either be a noun or a verb. And I'm really looking at this as a noun. And I like to think of it as a mental, physical, or chemical pressure or force. And one of the reasons that we think that stress is so terrible and so hard to deal with is that it really does feel like a pressure or a force or a weight kind of pushing down on us. But I'd also like to add that I feel like we think that stress is happening to us. And whenever we think something is happening to us, it leaves us with a feeling of being disempowered or powerless. And that is not a fun way to live your life. And when you feel powerless, you feel like nothing will change. Let me offer up a different perspective on stress. Stress is really not the feeling. You have stressors or you have something that is physically putting stress on you, but the emotion isn't stress. Um, and in fact, that pressure and that force is actually coming from within and it's coming from the feelings that are created from our thoughts about the stressor. So when you say, I feel stressed, that really doesn't mean anything. The better question is, what am I looking at as a stressor and what are my thoughts about it? So let me give you an example. And stressors can be big stressors, like catastrophic events, like losing your house or being in a flood or um, having a health crisis, or it can be a series of little stressors that add up to create a big stressor. Like, um, if your boss is belittling you every single day, that could add up and create a sense of stress about your job. 
But when you have the thought, I feel stressed, I want you to call BS on it and say, okay, brain, that is not really true. I am creating this feeling of pressure and force from within. And I'm doing this because of a thought I'm having. So what is my stressor? And let's just use loss of job as your stressor. So when you have a loss of job, your thoughts may run along the lines of, I'm not gonna be able to pay for food. I'm not gonna be able to take care of my family. I'm going to lose my house or my apartment and I'm going to be homeless. And if you have those thoughts, those are gonna create feelings that will indeed create a sense of pressure and force within. Now, you could also look at if you lost a job you hated or wasn't very fun, or maybe there's another job you wanted but you didn't wanna lose the uh, job security and let's say you lose that job, then your thought might be like, heck yeah, I get to go after the job I like, I get to create the job I want, maybe I wanna start a new business or become an entrepreneur, or maybe even become a life or weight loss coach. All of those things could be created from the, the stressor of losing your job. So again, stress is something that we're creating from within. It's a force or a pressure from within. and what we have to actually look at are what are the thoughts that are are creating a feeling that's driving this force and i would challenge you this week to really give yourself some wiggle room because most of the time you're going to be like no my loss of my job is creating the way i'm feeling and what i want you to do is just to wiggle with it a little bit look at when you feel like you're stressed out and challenge yourself okay what is Identify what is the stressor and what is the thought that I'm having about the stressor and what's the actual feeling. And what you'll find is that the feelings are typically going to be somewhere along the fear-based feelings. So fear, anxiety, um, uh, feeling terrified, overwhelmed, um, all of the, those kind of feelings are actually what you're truly feeling and not really stress. So when you go home from a stressful day at work and you reach to grab the leftover Christmas cookies, I want you to stop yourself and ask your three why questions or what questions. What am I asking this food to solve? Am I making a situation, trying to make a situation better? Or what am I afraid of? And then if you still don't have the question, then what is the stressor from today that's creating this feeling that I need to eat something? And then ask yourself, what are really the thoughts about the stressor? And how are those thoughts creating the emotions that are driving that pressure and force from within? I'm not asking you to change your thoughts. And in fact, changing your thought may not be the answer, but it does get us one step closer to realizing that we are truly in control of our emotions and therefore we're truly in control of our actions. So that's where I want you to focus this week. Um, try not to get stressed about this assignment and remember to put on your happy color whenever you really want to make yourself feel better. And um, I look forward to seeing you. And I am going to end now because I am experiencing one of my common stressors, which is when I record these videos, the neighborhood leaf blowers always start. So I'm going to leave you with the sound of the leaf blower and I will see you guys next week. Take care.